would also notice that we have two sets of coefficients, right? Remember that we have taken the automobile ownership variable and, and categorized it as zero cars, one car, and two or more cars. And we have used zero car, that is that you do not own a car, as a reference case. And the two sets of coefficients presented here are uh, owning one car, owning uh, one car against zero. So you always compare um, the, 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 the likelihood of an, of a, of an event based on, uh, based on a comparison with the base category. And so we compared the odds of owning one car against zero as a function of these explanatory variables and owning two cars, which is right here, against zero. In multinomial logic, we compete, uh, compute the odds ratio, uh, which uh, in the software that I use called Stata is called relative risk ratio. It's the same thing. Um, it's basically the same coefficient that you estimate and take the exponential of it, and that becomes the odds ratio or risk ratio. Now, let's start with suburbs or location. The odds of owning one car against zero for a household situated in inner suburbs is 1.54 times, right here, higher than a household that lives in urban core. Why urban core? Because we have kept the urban core as a base reference category, 1.54. But if I subtract one from it, and multiply it by 100, then it becomes 1.54 minus 1 times 100, 54%, which is that the odds of owning a car against not owning a car for a household that lives in the inner suburbs are 54% higher than a household that lives in the urban core. And if you look at it here, 1.93 for outer suburbs, the odds are higher by 93% for a household that lives in the outer suburbs of owning a car against no car, all else being equal. What does it mean? If we were to control even for their um, income, household structure, the demographics, that is number of children, um, the location of their employment, downtown versus elsewhere, and location of their employment in terms of proximity to transit, and the structure of street that they live on at their residence. If we were to control for all these um, influences and factors, and that's what we call all else being equal, we still see that those who reside in the suburbs, um, inner suburbs, are more likely to own more cars than those who reside in the urban core. And similarly, those who reside in the outer suburbs are more likely to own a car than those who live in the urban core. Right? Now, if I were to take you to the third column in this, in this table, where I am reporting the odds for two cars against zero, you would see that those households who live in the inner suburbs, they are two times more likely, two times more likely to own a car, own two cars, rather than owning no car, than those households that live in the urban core. Right? Similarly, those households that live in the outer suburbs are 3.4 times as likely to own two cars against not owning any car. And this is how you see how location impacts the propensity of a household to own or not own a car. So even when we control for demographics, income, household structure, street structure, whatnot, these influences remain significant. And notice that I have got these standard errors, which are very small, telling me that uh, these coefficients are statistically significant. Uh, the T stat is roughly 10 here. It's more than 10 here, because if you take the coefficient, oh no, actually, my apologies. Um, this is the exponential of the coefficient. So the coefficient would be smaller. Um, I, I, I have to take the log of this coefficient and then divide it by standard error to get the t star. So if you were to compare the odds of owning one car 
for a household with one child, you would notice that that household that household's odds of owning a car are 14% higher than a household with no child. The household with two kids has odds of owning a car 51% higher than a household with no children, and so on and so forth. You would see that the, the odds increase with two children, but they do not increase as much by three or four. And my guess is there are not many households in the data set with three or four children. And most households have one or two children, and therefore you see the odds. But you definitely see an increase in the odds with increase in the number of children. If you were to look at this, this three or four children here and take it to two cars, you would notice that the same thing happens, the odds increase. Um, a household with two children is two times more likely to own two cars rather than owning no car when compared with a household with no children. And you see the trend here increasing, but not necessarily for three and four kids. You would notice that low-income households are less likely to own a car than medium-income households and the odds are, this is the way I would compute it is 1 minus 0 0.69, uh, which is um, 0 0.31. So a low-income household is 31% less likely to own a car than a medium-income household. A low-income household is 31% less likely to own one car rather than owning no car. Or if you reverse it, you can compute the odd of owning no car versus a car. Remember, this is 1 over expen exponential. Um, so that would give you the odds of owning no car. A high-income household is 60% more likely to own a car rather than not owning a car than a medium income household, which is the base case. Again, all else being equal. Now, if you were to look at density, we have taken the medium population density as a base case, and we see that low population density neighborhoods are 31% more likely. So households living in low population density neighborhoods are 31% more likely to own one car rather than not owning a car against those households who live in the medium density neighborhoods. Similarly, or not similarly, those households who live in high population density are 25% less likely to own a car than those who live in medium population densities. And the way I'm getting these population densities, odds are 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25, or 25% less likely. The, an additional increase in a full-time, oh, sorry, let's look at the grid-like street pattern. We recognize that there is some truth to the fact that if you were, if a household were to live on a grid-like street pattern, that household is roughly 24% less likely to own a car than without, with, than not owning a car, and that household is actually 36% less likely um, to own two cars rather than owning no car. Similarly, full-time workers are three times more likely. An increase in the number of full-time workers increases the odds by three times for owning a car. However, an increase in a part-time worker only increases the odds by 1.8 times. So you, def you could see a definitive difference, a significant difference between the odds of increasing the full-time worker by one and increasing the odds of part-time worker by one. And you could see that theory that if you are employed in downtown, and downtown Montreal is very well served by public transit, you could see that uh, uh, the odds of uh, those who are employed in downtown, um, they are 12% uh, less likely to own a car than those who are employed elsewhere. 
and those who are employed near a metro station are 19% less likely to own a car than not own a car. And again, you can explain the same in the same manner for two cars against zero cars.